8.30 p.m. on Monday, May 18th, 2020. Thank you for joining us. This is Janet Hill with the Rock Island County Health Department. Today you'll be hearing from Nita Ludwig at Rock Island County, Ed Rivers at Scott County, and we also have Kirby Wynn with us from the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center. After their prepared statements, all speakers will take your questions. We ask that you direct your question to the, to the speaker within the chat box. And then, as always, Brooke Barnes of the Scott County Health Department will, will moderate the Q&A section. Nita, start us off today with Rock Island County's numbers. Sure. Today we are saddened to report one additional death due to COVID-19 of a man in his 90s. You know, we are all vulnerable to contracting this deadly virus. To protect yourself and others, please stay home, wear a face covering when you're out, and practice social distancing when we go out for food or essential supplies. And of course, remember to wash your hands frequently. The other um, cases reporting today, we have, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. We have 14 new COVID-19 cases, which brings our total in Rock Island County to 641 total cases, and 15 patients are currently hospitalized. Since we didn't report since our last call on Thursday, I'll give you the numbers for the intervening days. Uh, there were four on Friday, made our total 297. Four on Saturday, made our total 301. Six on Sunday, brought it to 307. And two today, uh, makes our total 309. Uh, we still have only eight deaths. So as our communities reopen, as the Quad uh, Cities on our side did in part last week, we must guard against the temptation to get back to normal and stop doing all the important things that have helped us lower the impact of coronavirus in our community. Now, this is not a new message. And we know this will not be a welcome message. It is, however, a message that must be delivered. It's the responsibility of those in public health practice to safeguard the community and provide accurate and timely information. It's tempting to slide back into a sense of normalcy. We're all tired of having a social distance, but what, can we afford to relax now? No. We risk moving from slowly increasing cases of COVID-19 to a large in increase in the spread of the virus if we return to normal activity. As a community, we can't afford that. Since our community is starting to reopen, does that mean life should feel like it's getting back to normal? It shouldn't if you're doing what we're asking of. So we'll emphasize again how you can avoid contracting COVID-19. Use caution and plan how and when you'll go out. Avoid large gatherings of people. These still run the risk of spreading the virus. Also, you should not increase the number of people you're having over for a social gathering to more than 10. Even then, you still run the risk of spreading the virus. You should still keep at least six feet of physical distance between yourself and others anywhere you go. The virus is spread when we are close to one another. And don't take trips to see relatives since you and the kids have more time at home right now. The risk is simply too great. Life's not getting back to normal right now and it won't be getting back to normal for a long time. Please heed this message. Be cautious about where you go, with whom you come into contact, and how you interact when you're out. Caution is the key to controlling and hopefully eventually eliminating this threat. Brooke. Thank you, Ed. Next, we'll hear from Nita Ludwig with Rock Island County Health Department. We are starting to see lower positive COVID-19 tests, and we're hopeful that this is the beginning of a trend. Illinoisans remain under Governor Pritzker's stay-at-home order until at least May 29th. Staying the course now gives us a better chance to move into phase three of his Restore Illinois plan. All regions in the state are on track to move to phase three on May 29th. 
29th, and that's just 11 days from now. Phase three will loosen some restrictions. Manufacturing offices, retailers, and barbershops and salons can reopen with limited capacity and some other restrictions. Face coverings will still be required, but uh, fitness centers and health clubs can offer one-on-one -on -one training and outdoor classes. Limited child care and summer programs can operate, but working from home will still be strongly encouraged. The best tool we have right now is still social distancing, and that's still in effect with no gathering allowed of more than 10 people. We've been talking to you for months now about flattening the curve. And that whole concept keeps the cases below the healthcare system's capacity to care for those patients. It doesn't mean that we reach that milestone and then we're ready to go back to completely normal again. We've done a good job across the board of flattening the curve. Hospitals have not been overwhelmed. The consequence of flattening the curve, though, is a prolonged time of a lot of cases. We have seen that, as the governor said last week, with the metric show, our peak could come in June sometime. We understand that it's been a long two months for people. It's been a long two months for me, too. I'm crushed that I won't get to see my son walk across the stage for graduation at Rock Island High School. And my daughter has missed out on the second semester of her, uh, University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. I miss going out to eat. I'm tired of cooking. Frankly, I'm tired, and I know you all are, too. But that's why we're asking you to hang in with us for just a little bit longer and follow Governor's, Governor Pritzker's phase in reopening. We are trying to keep a surge from happening down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Ed and Nita. Next, we're going to hear from Kirby Wynn with the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center. So go ahead, Kirby. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. Um, early on in all of this, uh, we talked with media about uh, a steep decline in the rate of blood donation because so many groups had to cancel blood drives uh, right off the bat uh, with schools closing, with businesses asking employees to work from home uh, and all manner of changes like that. Uh, we soon learned uh, that the demand for blood components uh, was not going to stay the same either. So the rate of blood donation decreased, but so did the use of blood at the same time. And so for a number of weeks, the blood supply remained in balance and uh, uh, we uh, didn't need to go out to the community and ask for additional donors. Uh, of course, blood components are still transfused, um, pandemic or no pandemic. Uh, there are patients in treatment uh, for cancer uh, there are traumas that occur, there are surgeries uh, that, that have to go on that, that are not elective. Um, and now we're at a point where things are changing. Um, and uh, we are seeing now some increased need in the use of blood components. So uh, we have a news release that uh, I will send to our local media uh, here just uh, kind of during or, or right at the end of the media briefing uh, that talks about that. It is a challenge for us right now. Uh, but I really want to invite our, our CEO, Mike Perica. I see you, uh, Perico, uh, that is. Uh, don't know why I mispronounced your name uh, here and now. Uh, but uh, you're in the office today. Uh, hello from home. Uh, and please uh, just take it away and, and uh, share the first couple of paragraphs of our news release. Well, thanks, Kirby. I appreciate the introduction and the opportunity. As, as many know, um, Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center is calling on donors to help respond uh, to an increasing need in blood utilization by hospitals within our four state service region. You know, after several weeks of reduced activity, hospitals have eased restrictions on elective surgeries and are now providing treatment options that were previously postponed. <clears throat> MVRBC is responding uh, to that increase in demand for blood products uh, by local hospitals. And if you could, please schedule an appointment for a donation dialing 1-800-747-5401 or visit our website at bloodcenter.org uh, or also use our Blood Center mobile app, which is uh, bloodcenter.org backslash app for app. 
Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, many organizations that typically hosted blood drives, mobile blood drives, have been forced to cancel or postpone these events due to temporary closures, work at home policies, uh, and other factors. And over that six week period, demand for components actually dropped to about 80, per, excuse me, about 60% normal levels. However, as hospitals have increased activity served by MVRBC, patient need has returned to approximately 80% of pre-pandemic levels. So Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center relies on support from local donors and organizations host mobile blood drives to provide the blood products for hospitals in our region. We are always grateful for that support and even more so during the COVID-19 pandemic. We are now asking for additional owners and horse organizations to step forward during this challenging time. We've also done a few activities to make sure that we're maintaining safety uh, for our blood donors and for our blood center folks. All staff and donors are now required to wear face coverings while inside of our blood center, and, and as well as at mobile blood drives. We're also requiring appointments so that we can maintain appropriate physical distancing and appropriate donor flow. Now walk-ins will be accepted, but only when there's an appointment slot available. We've also taken additional steps from a cleaning perspective that we're making sure that we are cleaning our facilities um, between donations, staff are wiping down chairs, surfaces are maintained in a safe and hygienic environment. And we've also spaced our chairs further apart in the donation space as well as in the refreshment post donation areas. And with that, I'll hand it back. Hi, uh, Kirby here, uh, just with a, a brief comment. Number one, it, sign language interpretation never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> so great work, Tricia. Um, we have a, a couple of others um, uh, here uh, from the Blood Center, uh, Pete Lux, uh, responsible for our donor services and blood collection team, Amanda Hess, uh, responsible for donor recruitment. Uh, we're just all available for any questions uh, if folks have them. Um, I, I, I do want to thank uh, Brooke and, and everyone involved for this opportunity. Uh, our blood center is the provider for all blood components that are transfused uh, at our local hospitals in the Quad Cities. And so um, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to keep everyone informed of uh, how we're responding uh, to all of this and uh, the challenges that we face moving forward. So thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today and talking about the need for the blood supply and how the community can respond to that. Next, we'll go to the questions in the chat. We'll invite Ed and Nita to join us again. We're starting to get almost a Brady Bunch size here now, so thank you for all being on. Um, our first question that we have will be for Nita. Um, new cases in Rock Island County include one infant. Do you know if the child contracted it from the parents? Do you have any advice for other parents who might be concerned? Yeah, I do not have information about how the child contracted it in front of me. Um, perhaps the nurses in our department know, but what I would say is this is not the first infant that we've reported. So there have been others who have gotten COVID-19 here. And um, I would just have the parents really watch for those signs and symptoms that their child might be um, acquiring COVID-19 and get them tested and call ahead and um, get that taken care of right away. And then again, to even look for those other symptoms of the inflammatory issue, and such as a rash and, and uh, the other signs and symptoms of that so that we don't run into these problems. Another question for you, Nita. Could you please update us on the Tyson and other meatpacking plant numbers? Any public information that you have on that? Sure, and I only have the numbers for the Tyson plant in Joslin, Illinois, in Rock Island County. And they currently have 129, 129 um, Rock Island County residents that have tested positive for COVID-19. And that is approximately equal to about 4% of their total workforce. Thank you. We do have a question for the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center, so perhaps you can all decide who will answer this. Did the blood center have to lay off or furlough any employees? If so, how many? And have they been able to return to work? And did they get paid during their time off? I appreciate the question and I'll take it. Um, 
you know, unfortunately, we did find ourselves in a position where we had to have a furlough. Um, we also had a change in compensation for our uh, executive leadership team, as well as our directors, uh, where compensation was, uh, was decreased. Um, now, how many? Uh, it turned out to be about 15% of our workforce. Um, and um, it is a furlough, not a, a, a RIP. So we are indeed paying for benefits associated therewith during the furlough. Um, have any been able to return to work? Yes. Matter of fact, um, we've had a, some return to work immediately um, and then some today as well. Um, so as we look forward, um, we're making sure that we have appropriate resources in place to respond to the need of the hospitals. So we did have some furloughed um, and they are already coming back um, in, in a very uh, deliberate fashion though. Um, so 15% out. Um, and uh, so far, only four have returned. Thank you very much for that. Um, and perhaps we can have connect you to follow up later. I think there might have been a tiny bit of an audio um, shortcut there, but we will connect you with that. So 15%, it says how many in the workforce? Is that Are you able to give us an idea of what that number looks like? Yeah, we have roughly 750 employees through our system. Okay, and then I think a follow-up, just if the audio cut out, um, were they paid and were benefits continued at that point? Yes, um, so anybody that's furloughed, um, we continue to pay their benefits. Um, we also, uh, for those that needed to, we've offered a negative PTO bank, um, so they can use the blood center um, as, as a negative PTO bank to offset some, if they have the need to offset some losses of, of financial uh, or financial impact. Thank you. If there's any additional questions, we ask you to type them off, type them into the chat. Um, and can you just give a description? It looks like there's a question on what paid time off bank looks like or what that negative PTO bank means. Um, so uh, paid time off, um, I'm assuming everybody understands what that is. We allowed uh, staff to go to um, a negative 80 hours. So let's say somebody had accrued a 40 hours in their PTO bank um, that they were going to use, um, we would allow people to go to a negative 80 hours inside of that bank. Thank you. You're welcome. It doesn't look like we have any additional questions at this time, so we'll go ahead and conclude the briefing for today. Again, thank you to the Mississippi Valley Blood Center for joining us. Um, as they shared, their press release will be sent out shortly if you have not yet received that. And we look forward to speaking with everyone again on Wednesday when we'll hold our next briefing um, where Ed and Nita will be joining us again. So thank you everyone for your time and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe.